The new Warlord Games French Army Bolt Action Starter Set has just launched. I believe, as I'm recording this, it's just come off pre-order and into general release. The kit itself contains some new plastic sprues, which can be made as chasseurs of hide, fortress troops, engineers and colonial troops. If you opt for the starter army, you also get a medium machine gun, a medium mortar, a 25mm anti-tank gun, some HQ, all your decals and smoke and cars and things, and a Char B1 tank as well. Warlord Games very kindly sent me a few bits a couple of weeks ago to have a little look at and maybe paint up. So they sent me a weapons team or a box of weapons teams and a couple of frames of the lovely new plastic French infantry. The weapons teams are in the new Warlord resins, the new version of Sciocast that they have released, which is much firmer than the old Sciocast, still slightly bendy, but much, much easier to file. And, and these look pretty good examples of them. Very, very easy to clean up, very little flash on them at all. And I really had no trouble cleaning them up and whacking them on their bases. The new frames themselves look pretty spiffy too, loads of different head options to make those four different types of infantry, lots of different bags and things, and the kit looks pretty easy to go together, arms holding weapons already rather than on separate parts, nothing where you've got to balance a weapon between two hands and try to glue them and get them all in place at the same time, which, is, which does remove a little bit of your ability to pose differently, but definitely makes it easier to build an army, and, and I probably prefer it that way. So I was asked if I would like to paint some up as engineers. So welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart and welcome to a French army painting tutorial for bolt action. Sadly, I don't have time to paint these all up. Too many projects on the go. So I, I wanted to pick my victim. I wanted to make sure that I picked him a miniature that uh, was in the right pose to help the painting. So I went for a bit more of an open stance so I could actually get to the chest of the cross belts and, and the webbing and things like that to show you and demonstrate how I was going to paint those. Make it a little bit easier for myself as well, but it definitely works better for the presentation of a video. Lovely plastic miniatures cleaned up super, super easy and went together really, really well. No problems at all here and it wasn't long before I had my miniature ready for painting. A black prime and then a very heavy zenith or white with the airbrush because I was going to base coat in, in contrast paint, something I like to do quite a lot. And then it kind of all started to go a little wrong from there. So I painted the whole miniature, sat down to edit, and I realized pretty much all of the footage was just slightly out of focus. And it got to the point where it just wasn't usable at all, consistently out of focus all the way through. So you see this sped up now, and we get to the end, and there we have the painted miniature. And there's the finished miniature. Let's call him Pierre, and I'm very happy with him. I think he came out pretty well. But I couldn't rightly leave it there and have a, a six minute video with a terrible painting tutorial all sped up. So I scratched my head, swore a little bit and decided to start again. So let me introduce Gaston and Philippe. Um, I've decided to do the weapons teams that gave me something different to paint and an opportunity to showcase something else. So I started with contrast snake bite leather and I'm applying this to all of his bags. Now hopefully I can keep this in focus. They're a sniper team, so hopefully they'll be good at focusing and help me to keep in focus. Now Gaston here hasn't got the rifle. Maybe Gaston's a little bit too friendly with the brandy that's hidden in his bag. So maybe he's not the best one, but I will do my best to try and keep this in focus because I, I will not be recording this for a third time. So next up we have some contrast Saigor brown and I'm going to be using this on the boots. Now this was all the paint that the boots will get. They're going to be covered in mud effect and weathering powders and things at the end. So this contrast paint over this almost white base layer will give all the natural highlights it needs from the way these kind of paints work and with the extra powders and things on spending time highlighting them would just be a waste of time. Now I turn to Garagax Sewer, and the idea here is to give the miniature pretty much a full covering in this, 
apart from the skin and the helmet. And then you could do the helmet in this as well, and then you get a very similar effect that I do at the end of the minute, you will see later. Now, if you're not one for using a Zenithal Prime and contrast paints, you could skip the first couple of stages and spray your miniature a brown, a medium brown like this, and pretty much follow all of the other methods afterwards it will work perfectly for you you may want to blank out the skin again if you're going to use contrast on the skin like i do um, but um, you can definitely spray brown from here and and be done with it and still follow all of the steps after this now the bags have a little bits of leather trim looking at the pictures and looking at the studio paint job so i left those as clear as possible and use this same garagak sewer to go around and complete all those edges Blocking in the base skin there with Vallejo Express Color Dwarf Skin. I didn't say contrast. What I mean really is a wide range of these new speed style paints. So I use a mixture of Army Painter, Contrast, and the Express Color at this moment in time. And I love base coating with them over a Zenithal highlight. And then I tend to paint very traditionally after that point. I just find that it's much more pleasing to base coat in this way. And I find it much quicker as well. Nearly at the final part of the base layers and I'm turning to contrast Dark Angels Green and I'm plonking that on the helmet here. You could use brown here, it may even be better to use brown here. But the overall effect at the end makes doesn't make a huge difference and I decided to opt for green at this stage. Turning to contrast a Black Legion, I'm going to use this on the barrel of the weapon and anything that would be metal. Now we turn to my first major dilemma, of, apart from the fact of not being able to focus my camera, it's the uniform colours. And here we see the lads here posing for me so I can get a really good idea of what to paint them. I just couldn't find any reference or any real idea of what colour to use scouring my model color range and there were so many things that were close enough it's like a nice mix between a, a green and a brown and a khaki i just couldn't find anything that matched lots of googling and lots of different examples online but nothing definitive so i decided to mix my own after a little bit of playing around what i found was a 50 50 mix of us olive drab and us field drab and I should say, I messed around with this mix before I decided to base the miniature brown. I think the brown colour coming through helps this kind of base layer in this green to give the effect that I'm after. But not only that, it gives a perfect base layer for all of the, the leather strapping and webbing and the wraps around the tops of the, the soldiers' boots and things as well, which saves you loads of time later on. So I carefully go around the miniatures, trying to leave that deep dark brown in the recesses where that contrast paint has settled. It gives you a nice outline of where to paint where you see the highlighted areas are. For the first highlight, I added some green brown to the mix, equal parts for all three, and that just lightened it slightly, but still kept it within the same spectrum so it didn't change from that initial color that I wanted it to be. Again, going around the whole miniature carefully, leaving some of the undercolour showing each time, sort of classic layering painting techniques. For the final highlight, I just used some straight green brown and carried on those traditional techniques. The lines are even thinner this time, picking out the top highlights, some thin, neat lines around the edges of clothing, on the highest points of the creases, and so on and so on. As this was my final highlight, I definitely took a little bit more time here. Tried to be a little bit neater. I do like to paint quite quickly and quite organically, so sometimes I have to slow myself down. But again, you don't have to be. You could be slapping this on here, or you could be stopping before you got to this stage. Even with that first mix, it will give you a close enough approximation of the uniform, as far as I'm concerned anyway. To highlight the brown leather strapping and webbing and edges on the bags, I've gone for flat earth and tan earth. Very simply, starting with the flat earth first, you'll see I'm also using it for the wood on the gun stock and just painting in and leaving in some of that darker colour underneath. Making sure I don't forget just to add a little bit to the edging on the bags and using that lighter tan colour just to add in some fade highlights. 
Sticking with model colour and using some cam olive green, I'm heading straight to the helmet now. All I want to do is leave some of that really dark green in the recess for a shadow. And like I mentioned earlier, I think you can get away with using the same brown as a base here and, and using this paint over top. It may, it may give an even better look. I haven't tried it, but having painted these three miniatures now, it, it may well be something I'd try if I was painting a whole army because I think it would save me even more time. Take your time on the tops of the helmets. You've actually got a little raised area with a further raised area in the middle. And if you are able to pick out some thin lines and, and leave those green in the darker recesses, it really creates a nice effect. Now turning to some Russian uniform as the final highlight on the helmet itself, focusing on those topmost areas I've just mentioned, around the rim of the hat itself, and then just painting in some thin lines around the top of the sides and around the edges as well. For the lighter areas on the bags, I'm using some green ochre and Iraqi sand and building them up the same way as I did with the flat earth and the tan. So a larger area of the green ochre covering most of that area, finishing off afterwards with some thin highlights of the Iraqi sand. You really don't need to put much of the Iraqi sand on at all to have a nice effect. Just painting the odd thin line in here around the edges really makes it pop. Now that most of the miniature is done, we're heading back to the skin and back to Vallejo Express colour, this time with gloomy violet and deep purple. And this is a really nice simple skin recipe over a zenithal highlight, so we started with the dwarf skin earlier on. Next we add the gloomy violet into the darker shaded area, so close to the, the cuffs, around the necks of the collars, underneath where the hat is, anywhere that's going to be shadowed a little bit and it really really tones it nicely and gives it some extra depth in the way that skin looks. Skin's not always flat, it's transparent and you can see reds and blues and greens and things showing through. After that you turn to the deep purple and add that towards the, the nose and the lips and over the knuckles of the hands and it just gives you the extra warmth. So with those three shades you get a very nice pleasing effect on the skin without yet doing any highlights at all. Now you could leave the skin there but I'm turning to Noctura Natural Flesh and Vallejo Basic Flesh from Model Colour, both Vallejo paints and highlighting a little bit just to really make them pop. So the, the Natural Flesh first just to add a slight highlight to where the knuckles and the raised areas are on the hands and not so much on these miniatures but I'd add it to the nose, onto the, the cheekbones and, and chin if they're visible as well. And then using the basic flesh to really make it pop by just painting on some dots on the knuckles on the hands and again if the face was visible you'd, you'd probably put a little bit on the nose on the very very tops of the cheekbones as well. Try and keep that gun looking dull I'm only giving it a subtle highlight with a soft artist pencil. And then we move on to the final stages of the miniature so I'm using for some Vallejo basing texture here. Washing it with some Agrax Earthshade when it was fully dry. Brushing on some dry pigment. Then after I've blown away the excess, adding lots of tufts to make the ground look nice and natural. Returning to some Vallejo Earth effects, this is European Mud and it's a really, really nice effect to add to your base, especially for grimy things like World War II. And then finish by tidying up the base with a little black rim. And here we are with two more finished miniatures and this time in focus, or at least enough in focus, enough of the time to present it as a, a video. And I was glad in some ways that I got to paint these extra miniatures and they were really, really nice and probably a little bit simpler to, to paint than the, the newer plastics, even though many of the details are the same, their poses meant that they were slightly quicker. The new plastics are great, they're just like any of the Warlord plastics in the bolt action range, the more modern ones are absolutely fantastic miniatures, multi-pose, went together super easy, really easy to clean up and if you're thinking of starting a French army I think you'll be very excited about this, this new range. The weapons teams are really really nice, I, I really have no issues at all with the new Warlord resin, it's much much better than before, I appreciate some people would prefer the miniatures in metal, I understand that. Um, I don't mind this, I prefer not to have min metal miniatures for, for wargaming, they chip and things. But we all like different things and there's nothing wrong with that. 
Well, I hope you've in, enjoyed the video. I hope that if you're thinking about uh, collecting a French army, this video maybe have helped you decide whether you picked up these new miniatures or not. Maybe as you're watching this, your order has just arrived as the pre-order period has just ended, which is hopefully really exciting for you and you're digging into your box now and starting building your army. If you enjoyed the video, please do give us a like. It does help it get seen by other people. And have a look at my channel and see if you like some of the other videos there. There's some other bolt-action painting tutorials. Lots of painting tutorials for other games, in including other World War II things as well. So give them a look as well. And if you like them, please consider subscribing. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you soon.